Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to our YouTube channel and welcome back to our workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hi, I'm Sean Kyo and I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hi, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Marco, I love to weld. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them is two best students. Well, what's the story? I'm Kieran Ross, I'm the apprentice mechanic. Hello, I'm Carl, and I'm the one that has to make these guys look good. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment what you want. Just put it in the comment system. We'll get back. So, in for repair today, we have our John Deere 7710, we have our John Deere 6910, we also have our MX bale forks there, and we have a new addition to the workshop there. And just on another note there, we are looking for some apprentice uh, mechanics here for the workshop, as uh, if you're of a mechanical mindset and you want to work and join our team, don't forget you can, in, you can uh, email Finnegan's Farm there or info at Finnegan's Farm if you're looking to, uh, maybe looking for an apprenticeship as either a fitter or maybe an engineer, just give us a shout there. So, uh, so first of all, the guys here are doing a little bit of maintenance uh, on the workshop. Uh, I'd also like to thank Cormac there from Midlevy Garage. We come down here with these two great posters there of, actually I think the two of the Optum there, the 300, really, really nice. So we just need to find a spot to put them up in the workshop. Always nice to have stickers and posters around the workshop there. It just kind of livens it all up a bit. So thanks guys. I'm going to head across here the lads. A little bit of uh, workshop maintenance going on in the workshop itself. See the lads making a lot of noise here, Caleb and, and uh, Marco. I think they're actually giving out to each other over here. So we'll go over here and see what's going on. So a little bit of workshop maintenance in the workshop. Our three uh, sliding doors here always kind of have to be looked after. A little bit of maintenance on them. I think this side is belonging to Caleb. There's always a little bit of controversy in which who should be maintaining which door. <laughs> uh, we've one in the middle there, which Marco says it should be Caleb. I have two doors, one only is one. No, you have one and a half door, I as well one and a half door. <laughs> Go. Always so yeah, a little bit, little bit oh. of spare grease is always handy to have. Now, you know, there, there's two and four but using grease. Sometimes the dirt can stick to them, but you know, having noisy doors really just would, would, would wreck your head. So we just, we just go and we use a, a, a lube brace there, kind of a spray grease on the door. As you can see there, lovely and quiet now. You wouldn't even oh, hear that one. Yeah. Oh, look at that, that's their job. <laughs> uh. Uh, the problem is, Darren Hubble yet again broke another bloody pipe on us. So, here it is. Mm. After getting mushed, mm. completely drive around, so completely avoidable. It wasn't John B's fault, no. No, look, I. This I, is genuine proof that was. Yeah, th this is genuine. This is a genuine F up, so it is. So, so you have your new pipe here? Yeah, I have the new pipe. I don't have it crimped yet, just in case we need it slightly longer or short or... Yeah, so you have a put out to get the lens so you don't pull it off and yeah, the bubble doesn't pull it off. Generally, when a pipe like this is not perished, gets broken, it's usually because either it's not rooted right or it's too long or it's too short. Because if your pipe is too long, it's going to interfere with stuff. If the pipe's too short, it'll just get stretched. So I just want to make sure that uh, she's all right. Yeah, so we get the lens right and then we'll go up and crimp it. Exactly. Right, so we're going to do the pipe that Darren Hubble managed to break anyways. So when it comes to identifying the pipes, there's no point in just thinking that's probably a half inch or a three eight or whatever. Always have to make sure so that we can make the right pipe. So in this, in this case, the pipe had got burst at a previous stage and we didn't have the right fittings. So what we had to do was crimp cut the pipe in half and we put half inch BSP fittings in the middle of it. So just to make sure of that, we've all our fittings nicely laid out here with our, our quarter, three eight and half inch hoses. And what I'll do is I'll get a male fitting and I'll put it into the pipe just to make sure that I have the right fitting. So I know that that end there is a half inch. So I can get my right female one and put it onto the pipe. Then with the far side, it's what it originally was, which was a metric M22, I'm fairly sure it is. So if I get a metric M22 male end and put it into it, I know that we have an M22 end. Whereas if I were to do it vice versa now and put my, my uh, BSP half inch male into the metric, they're actually fairly close. You can get cut, cut out quite often between the metric and BSP fittings. 
but the biggest difference normally is is that metric fittings have a lot finer of a tread than BSP. BSP treads are generally very coarse. So if I try and put the, the BSP fitting into the metric one, you'll actually be surprised that you can get it started. You might get it two turns, but it will not tighten up properly, and it's even loose for the first two treads or so. So you can get caught out with them quite easy. One is after identifying it properly, so I have two completely different ends on either side. Next thing is I have to set up my crimp ball. So on a half inch hose, we use a, a 33 die, so it'll close down to a minimum of 33 millimeters. And a half inch hose, generally crimped down, should go down to about 26 millimeters, or 26.5. So if I didn't even know my setting for the crimper, I can just keep going, crimping a small bit more, and I can put a calipers on it and make sure it goes down to 26 mil, because a hose that's not crimped properly, the end can blow off or the end can leak, so it can end up in quite a dangerous situation. So it is quite important to make sure that they are crimped properly. So only that I've done these a good few times before, if there's somebody that wasn't just too sure, the first thing I generally get them to do is put a calipers across and make sure that they are crimped down to the right size. Now, we have our, our indicator here, so once it's down to a certain, uh, a certain size, we'll become flush here on our indicator. So it says here for a half inch hose, we're gonna set this to 68. What 68 actually means, I don't know. I've just been following it for as long as I've been using this crumble. Now, so we are set to, bang on, 68. Now, so we'll squeeze it down. And there's, little, there's a little lug at the top of it. And I try and set the top of the shoulder flush with that and it will crimp the whole the whole fit so if i put this this up to it see the, the little shoulder it's just in line with the top and i'll give you this little line around the whole outside of the pot so we we'll squeeze it up now anyways this is the worst part of the job Maybe another reason why I call it bloody hand pump. Yes, you see me indicator here just coming up to the top. It's here on the on the top. So now that there is flush. I don't have my calipers with me, but when we go back down the stairs, we'll double check to make sure that the pipe is correctly. Now it's not the end of the world on the say it grabs and stuff like that but if you're making brake hoses or something like that that's where you really it is important to make sure the pipes are crimped 100% because if you have a brake hose leaking no brakes and ooh, quite dangerous situations. Now, yeah we'll eventually get this one here crimped. You can see that the end on the crimp is a lovely, nice, tidy job. Now, so we are going flush in this again and just make sure that we're set at 68, which is us set spot on. Now, so that would be that crimp. So we just check it without a dial indicator and we'll be sure then later on. So that's that pipe, will be stuck. The last time you would have seen the four-wheel drive drop box, we had to bring it there to the engineer shop to get it re-sleeved and it has just come back there now, so it looks to be a good looking job there. Eagle engineered up the road, done it there. In around the 200 euro plus to that there, so it's a far cheaper fix now than obviously getting a, a new box and all for it. So it's re-ground, the shaft will slide into it there. Nice and snug fit, and that's before we put the rings on. Um, so we just need to go over to Calum now. Calum is going to order up some, we need some bearing seals and a few other bits and bobs there just to uh, put the box back together. So we're going to head over to Calum. He's on the computer here, ordering up the parts there for the four-wheel drive, the drop box there. 
Yeah, just run through there, Kate, and we'll say on the John Deere website there, it's very accessible there at the minute, isn't it? Yeah, so John Deere have a website, partscatalog.deere.com, which, to my knowledge, is the only brand that have the part systems online for free. So it just leaves it that for the likes of us, when it comes to all them parts, that I can go on myself, put in my serial number, and I can make sure that I get exactly what I want, rather than being down the phone saying it's this or that, yeah. or, you yeah. know, and you could get the wrong parts. Say for me here, like it, I'm familiar enough with the, with the system, so it's very easy to to go in, put in my model of tractor, and give me different ranges of serial numbers. So we have an early tractor, so I can go onto that serial number. Then it gives us all our, our wee diagrams to kind of help pinpoint, and they're all numbered as well to make it even easier. But I know that if I look for MFWD for our four wheel drive, I can go into this here. Then again, it's numbered again to 21 is yeah. the housing, but some of them just don't have numbers out on the side. But what we are looking for is a four wheel drive clutch with secondary brake, European version. And now I have my diagram of all the, the parts that are involved in it, and they're all numbered so I can get my, all my part numbers and make sure that I get every, every piece that I want and uh, it'll even give me the, the retail prices. So we, we will do a pricing on it, we'll say, on something like that. I'm just waiting back for, um, if you order them up, then we can get the price from Need Farm Machinery. And if you do order them, then we order them on the stock order, which might take that little bit longer, but they will be that little bit cheaper. Yeah. So that's just one little tip there if you're ordering them up. Uh, again, the box has been re-sleeved there in around the 200 euro plus the VAT for the mark for, for doing that. And then it's just what's going to cost We've got a set of bearings, set of seals, yeah. um, that's and that's really it. So it's not a major, major uh, financial, financial uh, but now there is a bit of time. I don't know how many hours you'd say, and putting something like that in and out, there's probably uh, uh, three or four hours yeah. e either, either side, in and out, isn't yeah. there? Yeah, it would be, yeah. So a little bit of work there, change the legs and stuff like that, but yeah, we, we'll get a price on it there and we'll let you know. Yeah. So Caelan's okay, after ordering up the parts there that we need and we have identified them here. Now we picked them up the other day. Yeah, we just look with the series of bearings and what else was there, those seals? Yeah, in. so we had two bearings, two aces. Then we had our two seals on the shaft, our full drive output seal, the seal for the actual pin, uh, the mechanism for the handbrake as yeah. well. And then there was, there was one in here that we weren't quite sure about, but when we looked it up in the part number, which is, is always very handy to have, you can reference the part number there and look it up online. Uh, it had nothing to do with the four-wheel drive no. uh, drop box. It was uh, some other part that we'd ordered because yeah. we were a little bit worried. So the total bill came to, uh, without them parts there that were in it, it came to about uh, 209, including the VAT. So 160 euro plus the VAT. So not, not a massive, um, you know, a cost, cost would say, to doing it. Um, yeah. Obviously, it just takes the time now to get it in and out and get the get the get the box repaired there and stuff like that. So we hopefully will have it going now. I think that's really all that's stopping it. Yeah. From staying out of four wheel drive or staying in four wheel drive as well. Yeah, it's stuck, it's stuck in. Stuck yeah. in four wheel drive. So yeah, we we'll get it fixed up and we'll hopefully have it back there for the next day. Yeah. All right. So seven seven ten is back on the road again. Big job, Caelan, putting it, uh, yeah. four wheel drive pack back in or? No, really, but look, first time in Oven's going to be slow on you, but yeah. be more confident with the next one, so. Yeah, you but took it out, you brought it for a spin there, you can visibly see there the four wheel drive kind of cutting in and out on the on the button now. Yeah, yeah, so just some full lock on the concrete and you'll just get it bind up and knock it off, and you know, the big jolting. Yeah, well, look, you get a full breakdown on how he took it asunder in the video there, you'll see it there uh, coming through, so, uh, yeah. Good, great job. Spot on. So another handy uh, piece of equipment there that we got for the workshop there was our, it's a 20 gallons parts washer. As I say that, the compressor goes off here in the background there just to make sure that <laughs> I can't talk over it. Like. <laughs> anyway, just give us a second here now and away you go. Why is that? Murphy's law again. <laughs> exactly. Huh? Exactly. But yeah, look, at, it's, it's very handy and especially with this job here. You talk us through it there, Caleb. There's not a whole lot to it, to this obviously. We, what do we fill it with? Just fill it with either kerosene or fill it with diesel? What's the preferred? Well, we've been filling with diesel now at the minute. My preference would be kerosene, but look, it just doesn't really matter. Yeah. And um, I think Marco, but, but he wanted to see it going there, so he was yeah. mad to get some diesel into it here. Yeah. He put it's the expensive just, stuff on it. Yeah, he put the expensive stuff and the freaking price of it, you know yeah. what I mean? Uh -huh. But uh, hit the button here, all of a sudden then it just spews out there. 
Yeah, it easily comes out. Now, we will we will put some sort of a brush system on the end of it. At the minute there, we just have, what have we got there? A paintbrush. We, we just have a paintbrush there, which is comes in handy there. And we have the drop box here of the John Deere, which we want to clean out there, because there is little bits in there, and it's going to be a great job for that. Again, not very expensive. We got it in all tools direct there. I think in around the 240 euro mark, it's somewhere in around that, and I just can't remember, but that's what it is. But all the time it saves there, uh, just especially when you have bits of filings around and that, and in them yeah. cases, uh, you can give it a good thorough wash out. And we have a load of stuff lined up for Jack there to do as well. Anyway, I see him coming with, as we speak here, he's coming with some parts there as well. He so all up. He's going to be busy. Now, obviously, very important, keep your goods ahead, loads there on you. Yeah. Uh, and a pair of safety glasses there when you're doing anything like that, you don't want to splash, splash around like that. Now the kerosene can be a little bit more evasive there on the gloves, especially on the, the disposable gloves as well. Yeah, you'll be wearing a pair of latex gloves and all of a sudden you just have them stuck to your wrists and they'll be gone. Yeah, so a good <laughs> pair of gloves if you're going to use the kerosene, just just obviously be, be careful there when you're using it. But yeah, we're delighted with it there, it comes with it here with the light and that and we can, we can just do the few bits that we have yeah. to do. Very um, piece of kit. It's also very handy to have some of these uh, kind the of pads. pads there for soakage yeah. there, so when you do the job you can lift it down and you're not spilling it all over the place. It just kind of keeps keeps the place nice mm -hmm. and clean. We also put a drip tray underneath it here as well, you can see it. You just have to lift it up, but it, we'll put a drip tray underneath that as well, so if there is any spills or anything, eventually if it did ever leak then at least it's contained yeah. and bonded there within itself. So yeah, we're delighted with that now, we should hopefully get a good bit of work out of it. Oh, really close. Yeah. So another little product there that we got, we're just trying out there at the minute. Uh, just putting on the bonds of the tractors, kind of getting some of the shine back on them. How are you going there, Adam? Um. You're going all right. So it's a... Um, oh, what? Well, I don't know. It's up to, do I even pronounce it right, anyhow? But it's a product we got there in the local, uh, up in HLS. And it's kind of like a colour restorer. Now, we've used it there on some of the tractors there on the bonnets. And you can use it on plastic or even anything at all. And it just gives it that little bit of shine, and the shine actually does stay on it. So, uh, yeah, we're going to put on the balance of tractors, especially the older ones here, which probably need it, don't they? Yeah. So, uh, this guy is the expert I had, you know, he left them looking around. Good man, Adam. We have our 50k 6910 in here. We put it into the verge trimmer the other day, which needs two spools working on it. This spool worked perfect. This one worked, but this one here I kept throwing the pipe out of it, so we're just going to have to bring it into care this morning. We're going to have a quick look to see exactly yeah. what it is. We can pressure test it here with the clock. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go up into the cab here now. You think you have it in? Yeah, and it's, it's in anyway. It's in anyway, so we'll see. So can we, will it, will it stay it in? Generally, with, with all them couplers, if they were thrown away, the first thing you look at would be the male coupler on the back, but where the body tends to generally sit, we are way off, and I can pop the pipe out fairly handy. Just like that, it's just popping it out. So yeah, it popped out just like that. So I don't know, maybe it's the coupler or... So I have a brand new coupler here, so there's no fear of that. That coupler never seen much work. But if you just look into the coupler now, it's the next thing. So we'll check all a little ball times. So when you push it in, all you do is you push back these wee balls and then they come back on the back of the coupler here. So it's this part of the coupler that will wear. It'll end up with all these little detents of the ball and she'll throw it out. So if I look in here, you can see. Seems to be a bit of a foreign object in here actually. What's this? A bit of a stone. Yeah. Right, I get it. So. You want to pick? No, no. Yeah. I have it, I have it. It's at the top of someone's finger. <laughs> Something fairly hard anyway, it's like... It's not a stone, is it? I don't know. It looks fairly perfectly round, isn't it? Where was that? Sitting in the groove? Uh, yeah, it was just sit sitting where the groove would be. Just behind, behind the ball the Okay, so will we? So she probably wasn't even... We'll go on the foreign object here and try it again. <coughs> no. Okay. There we go. So she's holding full pressure. So, there you go. So that's down. all of us. Look at that. This is simple. Not just quite sure of the stone, but we'll investigate there and we'll have a look. Thanks, Caleb. So you can see it's important to keep the covers on. If the cover was on that there, that probably wouldn't have happened. These here have, have a spring on them, so the, the return. That one is working. That one is not great. 
and that's the one that gave the problem. So maybe that was left open, the boys pulled them out and never closed it. But it's always important then to keep your, the ends of your, your uh, quick releases there, the couplers there, keep them nice and clean and uh, keep the inside of them. I always give them a little rub if you can. Just do yeah. the rub with, with the rag there. No harm even to have a rag sometimes hanging around, stuffed in somewhere, wherever it is, just for doing that little, because it can be a dirty job and you don't want to get back in the cab there with oily hands either. Yeah. So uh, yeah, keep them clean. So now it's time for Tips and tricks, tips and tricks. So for this week's tips and tricks, we're joined by Mick and Caleb here. Mick has a, what is that Mick? An air hammer. Okay, explain a bit. Very simple, do that, pull the trigger. Wow. Wicked, never point and pull the trigger. Has to be against something. Yeah. Could take off. Okay, and it comes with a few different attachments. Yeah, there's a lot there. of different um, tips, chisel. That's a cutter for cutting steel, for exhaust and for splitting the yep. pipe. A load of different tips, but you can grind them to suit. So this, you're going to take off uh, the viscous fan here the, on the edge. This was a thing that was giving us grief. If Carl comes around here, you can see in here, you hold it there with a half inch bar, square bar, and we were under risk of wrecking it. And yeah. This is not easy to get off. And we okay. were trying to avoid that. I didn't want to put heat here because of the viscous coupling. So I rang Johnny Matches in Mead Farm. He says, try an air hammer. Okay. We tried the air hammer, first go, straight off. No okay. problem. So we're going to demonstrate here how it actually works. So I think I'm on the bar. Uh, always important to have your safety glass on, especially with something like this. If you're working around paint or anything like that, it could a bit it could fly. So we we'll put the gear on and we're at this is left hand thread now. Your left hand thread. Basically, what I did was on there. Yep. Relax and off she came straight away. Wasn't it? Yeah. What Couldn't we believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulling on the spanner, but the thing just crept off handy. So, will and it, it was one? tight. Is that tight or loose? I can never remember with left hand. No, it's left hand side. <coughs> yeah. So, a really hand, handy Great piece. Tool. And also, there for um, something to say, I would say, in the backs of the John Deere tractors here, especially uh, these pins here, now, they can be an absolute nightmare to get out. Mm. The handiest way to take them off, we do have to take the wheel off to take them off. But again, if it's something like that, Working, working the, the air hammer in again there. It just will. No, I just need, to, need a steady hand, that's all. But you can you can grind it to suit a little bit Put a point and get, get a point and get it in on that. Mm. And it's a great way of shifting those pins to get them off because sometimes we often see these might crack or break. Mm. And to get them off, you can spend a lot, a lot of time on them there. And when you Any, do, anything that's in an awkward position, you can't get a good whack with a hammer. Yeah. It's wonderful, yoke. And if you do get them out, put cheap. 20 degrees, putting them back on, then you. So, uh, what is the price of something like that? 20, I think I paid 20 euro for that in Lidl. Oh, God. There you go. So, for that money, you couldn't go wrong, could you? No. Yeah, so this week's tips and trick is for Air your hammer. hammer. So that's it from this week's Workshop Wednesdays. Hope you all enjoyed the video. It's just a quick shout out to, to Aoife and Maeve Lennon there from it by, who really, really love watching Finnegan's Farm, the YouTube channel. So uh, yeah, look, we hope you all enjoyed the videos. Don't forget to like, subscribe the videos and you will get a notification when they come through. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we'll talk to you all next Wednesday.